Very happy to have you all here today. I'm going to be talking about the uh, 2018 Belize tourism stats, how they relate to property values in and around Ambergris Key, what's happening with occupancy rates, uh, overnight uh, typical uh, rental rates, some of the hot areas right now on Ambergris Key. And I know I've been uh, taking your questions all week long in preparation for this. So at the very end, we're going to have a lot of live Q&A. Uh, but as we go through the webinar today, Please go ahead and type in any questions you have in that question box. And if it's appropriate, I will answer them as we go along. If it's better for me to wait to the end, I'll do that because sometimes I don't want to get bogged down answering a long question in the middle of the presentation when I'm going to answer it at some point in the future anyway. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dennis K. I have lived and worked in Belize for many, many years. My wife and I moved there in 2003 and I've had the privilege an honor of uh, being involved in a lot of different things in Belize, especially on the island of Ambergris Key. I've worked with HGTV, House Hunters International, uh, different podcasts, real estate investing podcasts, and most recently uh, went on a podcast with uh, Monica Sawyer, who is a fantastic uh, real estate investor herself, and she helps women to do the same, so that podcast will be coming out very soon. I've been on the TV shows uh, Live Here by This, highlighting properties in and around Belize, and they just have had a fantastic time. It's a beautiful country, great people, and I'm happy to be able to work with uh, all of you here today. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at tourism, and we're going to talk about why tourism is important to us as property owners, vacation home owners, or retirees, uh, because it does three things. Uh, we take a close look at the tourism numbers because it, number one tells us what the availability of property is going to be, both in the immediate future, for instance, next week, next month, uh, two months from now, but also it's a predictor of what's going to happen six months, a year, 18, 24 months from now, and I'll show you why here as we go through. It also affects occupancy rates, which are very important to us as we look at the rental returns that many of us are looking for as we buy condos, single family homes. We use them ourselves for a portion of the year, but also we want to put them in a rental pool to get some, some money back uh, to help pay for things like electricity, insurance, HOA fees and whatnot, and maybe even put a few dollars in our pocket to help pay for all those uh, Belican beers and uh, dinners out that we would no doubt be enjoying on the island. And number three is uh, when we look at the way tourism affects the country, especially like Belize, that we know which areas are going to become popular and why, and we invest there before they go there in mass. So we get there before they arrive and they were in a prime uh, spot to take advantage of some good opportunities. So that's what we're gonna do today. So let's take a look at this next slide. The 2018 Overnight Guest Tourism Stats, and these were released by the Belize Tourism Board. So these are official numbers that were just released just a few weeks ago. And in 2018, there was an overall 14.6% increase in the number of overnight arrivals. And it's not talking about cruise ships. It's talking about overnight arrivals in 2018. That's an increase of over 62,000 overnight visitors. Now that might not sound like a lot to somebody who's visiting Las Vegas or Orlando or Cancun or Playa del Carmen, but that's a pretty big deal to Belize. Remember the, the country of Belize only has 350,000 people living in it and the entire country, Ambergris Key, the most popular destination in Belize, only has about 24,000 people living on it. So to have an increase, and not a total number, but an increase of over 62,000 overnight visitors uh, throughout the year is just incredible. Now, that is important, but when we look at the past 10 years, what, what tourism has done, uh, we see an even more interesting, interesting analysis. For example, the past three years, uh, so 2016, 17, 18, have all had double digit increases in the numbers of overnight guests. And in the last 10 years, the growth has doubled from 232,249 uh, uh, all the way up to just under 500,000 in 2018. Now, here is a very interesting graph. So if you're a numbers guy like me, take a look at this graph. You see that the increase in these numbers is spread out throughout the year. So for example, the first column shows the 2015 numbers compared to 2016. And you notice the months they had the biggest increases, January, May, 
September. We have a 24% increase in January, 20.2% increase in May, 26.9% increase in September. September is a very low month. Sometimes we get a lot of rain in, in that month. So to have that percentage of increase is fantastic for us. Also, look at the next column, 2016 compared to 2017 numbers. Now, we have different months increasing. We have April, 24.2%. We have August, in the middle of summer. People say, well, why, why would anyone go to Belize in August, in the middle of summer, when the weather's beautiful in the U.S. and Canada during that month? But simply, they go there to escape the heat. So we have Floridians, Texans coming down. Rather than sit there and sweat it out in those hot states, Arizona, they come down to Belize. At least they're in their shorts and T-shirts, swimsuits, uh, swimming in the Caribbean waters, and they get to cool down a bit. But also, those months are the months that families often are able to come down. So the kids are off school. Uh, sometimes the summer vacations, it's nice. So rather than go camping in their backyard or go somewhere close to home, uh, many families are deciding to go to Belize and have a family vacation on the island. Now, compare the last column, 2017 to 2018. Again in January, 26.3% increase. March, 22.2% increase, and July, 19.8% increase. So every single month across the board over the past three years has had some double-digit growth, some significant growth, and we're seeing that all across. Now, interesting, here's what's happening. Look at the top line in January. We have uh, two th uh, the year 2015, 16, and 17. You notice Last year in January, we had only a 0.7% increase compared to the previous year. Uh, you might think, well, what, what's going on with there? Why is tourism dropping off? Well, it's not dropping off. First of all, we had a 24% increase the year before. But second of all, we had no more inventory. All the hotels were booked. Uh, we Everything was sold out. We were 100% occupancy. So people that were looking at booking in January either found all the hotels were booked or what they found was that prices had risen so much so that they were willing to wait for a few months later to go. So, for example, that's when they came down in April and we saw a 24% increase during that month. But again, look what happened in 2017 uh, compared to 18. January just bumped up again to 26% increase. Why? We had more inventory come online. Simple, simple as that. So this is very, very interesting to see what the tourism is doing. Now, here's a very interesting slide, again, produced by the Belize Tourism Board. Uh, this is uh, overnight arrivals from January 15, uh, 2015 to January 2019. And in the lower right-hand corner, we have a very interesting statistic uh, telling us what the overnight visitors were in January 2019. And we see already there is another 4.4% increase compared to last year. Now this is numbers on top of numbers and on top of numbers. So this isn't a static uh, number. This isn't compared to, let's say, who came in 2010. This is year over year over year growth. So what's the, what's the, um, what's the verdict on this? Well, people obviously are loving Belize. They're coming down. It's in the news. We see it all the time now. When I first moved to Belize in 2002, uh, I told my parents we're moving there, and they're like, where the, where, the, where the heck is that? Even today, I tell people that, uh, you know, um, uh, living in Belize, owning property in Belize, and they say, that, is that in Africa? You know, they just, they, they'd never heard of it before. So it's, uh, it's catching on, and it's doing quite well. Now, here is where it becomes important for us, because if you're on today listening to this, you're probably interested in buying some real estate, owning a vacation home, retirement home. Does this increase in tourism actually affect property values? Now, I'm going to show you this slide. It's very important. But before I do, please go ahead and take a minute. I'm going to launch this poll because I'm going to tailor the next portion of my webinar to your input. So I'm going to launch this poll that asks a simple question. Why are you attending this webinar? Should be on your screen now. And I got four options. Number one, I'm just curious. I want to know, know more about Belize. Number two, I'm looking to own vacation property. Number three, I'd like to retire in Belize. And number four, I'd like to invest in Belize real estate. When, when I use the word invest, I mean just for the financial return. So please just take a minute, go ahead and vote. And when I see the voting, calm down. We've got uh, several people online today. Uh, I'm going to end the poll. I'll share it with you so you can see what uh, your fellow attendees are looking for. And then I'm going to tailor the next portion of this webinar uh, to those results.
All right, so people are still voting. A couple more need to vote. All right, excellent. Very good. And I'll share this with all you on Facebook Live as well. Close the poll and share the results. All right, so 20% of you are just curious. That's cool. I like working with you guys. 20% uh, of you are looking to own vacation property. Excellent. 40% of you would like to retire in Belize. And then 20% would like to invest in Belize real estate just for their financial return. Excellent. That's good news. So let's go on to the next slide. The question we had is, is the increase in tourism affecting property values? And if so, how are these people that are coming down? Are they also interested in buying? Now, here are numbers that I just pulled off the Internet today. First of all, look at the first line, the top of the slide. And I'll explain this to you guys who don't, who don't see the slides. Uh, Ambergus Key Real Estate, those key words, Ambergus Key Real Estate, those are significant. On average, 880 people per month Google those words. Now you might think, well, that's not very much. Well, you know, Belize is one of the smallest islands in the Caribbean, 25 miles long by, by four miles wide at its widest, 24,000 people live there, but 880 Americans and Canadians every month are Googling Ambergris Key Real Estate. Now, here's the big number. 18,100 are Googling the term Belize Real Estate. So that's about 20,000 people per month are sitting down on their computers and they're typing in Belize Real Estate, Ambergris Key Real Estate. So that's the interest. That's what we're seeing as interest. Now, on this slide, compare that with the overnight visitors that we just had in January, so just a few weeks ago. We had about 50,000 people arrive in the country. Of those 50,000, about 20,000, so what is that, about 40%? About 40% of everybody who came to Belize sat at their computer and at least had enough interest to see what the real estate market was like. Now, how many of those percentage-wise do you think are buyers? If they're coming to Belize, if they're actually Googling what is the real estate market like, even if it's just 1%, a half a percent, 0.2%, we can see that the tourism is affecting the market and that people are interested. So let's go to the next slide. Here's further proof. I just pulled this off of my, uh, of my Facebook page here just about uh, 40 minutes ago. Uh, I want to show you some of the numbers because I think they're pretty darn exciting. I posted this house which is located in the Coastal Living Subdivision. So it's the Mahogany Bay Village Subdivision, which is about two miles south of town. I posted this little house and just has a, a brief description. It says, uh, looking for a cute little house in Belize? Would this one do? Email me for more info, including price and location. And in just six and a half days, we had 108 people respond to that by specifically asking for more information, price, location, options, financing terms, everything like that. And that post was shared 41 times. Now again, if you're really big into Facebook marketing and advertising, you might not think that these numbers are huge, but for me, this is pretty spectacular. You know, 108 people in six and a half days said, what is the price of this? I'm interested. You know, give 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 me uh, give me more information. That's, that's just unreal. Let me show you this next one. I have a, a short video of myself standing on the shores of Ambergris Bay, highlighting about two or three of the beachfront properties I have for sale over there. And I put this up on Facebook again just six and a half days ago. And what are the numbers on this? I think it's something like uh, forty-eight thousand people have seen this video already, and almost a hundred have emailed me asking for more information on these lots. So people that are coming down uh, are affecting the, the, the market. People are Googling Belize real estate. This is just fantastic. Let me put this on hold for a bit because let me talk about the cruise ship uh, visitors. Now, I know, I know cruise ship uh, passengers and cruise ships in general have gotten a bad rap. But you know what? Millions of people like taking them. So that's the bottom line. And cruise ships do have an impact on the markets that they serve. Now, with Belize and Ambergris Key, this is actually very, very interesting because 
when a cruise ship visitor visits Belize, they either get off at one or two places. Number one is Harvest Key, which is a private island. So when they get off the ship, they enjoy this nice private island that's pristine and clean and safe. And they have a beautiful first experience. I like to call it like a first date with the country. So they get off and they, they see this beautiful uh, island, lipstick on, all made up. They, they just fall in love with it. They have a great time. They eat the ceviche. They drink the Belican beer. They drink the one barrel rum. They love it, or they get off at Belize City. Now, Belize City is, is not so pretty. It's, it's not a, a very nice place, but, but and, and this is not to, to offend anybody living in Belize City because they will also agree with me. But tourists don't particularly like Belize City. But when they get off the boat at Belize City, they go and do things such as snorkel and diving, or not snorkel and diving and fishing if they can take a day trip out to the islands. Or they go inland and they do things such as cave tubing, exploring the Mayan ruins, canoeing, uh, things like that. But those are a first exposure. Now, cruise ship visitors have a little bit longer lead time when it comes to purchasing real estate. For example, the cruise ship passengers that are stopping now in the country they will either like it or hate it. If they like it, sometimes they'll start planning a trip back. Now, this might not happen for a year. Normally, take, people take one large vacation a year. But if they come back next year, they're going to be researching where to go. And they will most likely go where they experienced having a good time on their cruise ship. So if they land at Harvest Key, one of the beautiful islands, they're going to say, you know what, what is an island that I can go to and enjoy? Because you can't go to Harvest Key on a vacation. It's a it's a private island owned by the cruise ship companies. Uh, but they could go to Key Cocker, Ambergris Key. So here's what's exciting about cruise ship passengers. Last year, cruise ship passenger arrivals surpassed 1 million people. 1.2 million people visited Belize on cruise ships, far larger than the number of overnight guests. So think about the massive exposure that this gives the country. Again, they're not overnight guests, so they're not eating dinners in their restaurant. They're not spending money on hotels, uh, but they are spending money. They're being exposed. So what we happen to see is now these million people that visited in 2018, a percentage of them will book a tour or book a vacation in uh, the next year or two. They will come back and then they will become part of those people that fall in love with it, buy property, want a vacation home, want a retirement home. And the reason they'll do this over other countries or other Caribbean islands that they visit is number one, because of the language. Uh, English uh, is spoken in Belize. It's the official language of Belize. And so their cruise ship might have stopped at other islands but if they're looking at a place to own a vacation home, retirement home, that one fact draws more people to Belize than anything else. Also, the real estate laws in Belize are very solid. Expats can own property. It's fee simple title. This is not the case in many other Caribbean islands. And also because our government is stable, um, it's uh, there's, there's a host of reasons why people might choose Belize over other areas. So these cruise ship passengers actually have us pretty excited, even though we're not going to see the results for at least maybe 12 months, 24 months down the road. But again, here's a nice little graph. Look at those numbers. Uh, we had a 34% increase in May. We had a 73% increase in what month is that? Uh, August. Overall, 19.9% over the previous year. These are some pictures of Harvest Key that I took personally. I took my parents on a 50th anniversary cruise. You can see what I mean about a first date. It's a beautiful island. It's great. My parents loved it. And uh, anyways, it's, it's just a good exposure to the country. However, this is interesting. Some people don't like islands that are affected by cruise ships. And I understand that. If I'm going to live somewhere, maybe I don't want a million people coming off the boat and getting off on my shores for the day and, um, you know, that kind of thing. Well, look at this map. Ambergris Key is over 105 miles away from Harvest Key, where most of the cruise ship passengers get off. And so Ambergris Key is not affected by cruise ship passengers at all. They don't go there at all. And in fact, they can't because Ambergris Key has the barrier reef right outside of its shores. And it's impossible to have a cruise ship even anchor out in the deep water and tender people in. So Ambergris Key will never have cruise ship tourism, but the, 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 the market benefits because of those cruise ship people who visit the mainland and the other islands. So that's it for the tourism. Let's go a little bit now into the significance of the overnight guest and why we're so excited. Overnight guests on the island of Ambergris Key tend to want to purchase property where they have enjoyed having a good time. 
So, for example, if my guests stay down at Victoria House or the Hilton, they end up wanting to buy in those areas. Why? Because in their mind, that is where they had a good time. That's where they sat out and had a beer and watched the sunset. That's when they got up early in the morning and had their coffee watching the sunrise. Uh, that's where their tours originated from. So they might go out to the reef snorkeling, diving, and fishing, but because their boat captain picked them up at that dock, they, they, they fall in love with that area, right? People that uh, live or stay on the north side of Ambergris Key, it's the same thing. You go up to Copa Beach, Grand Caribe, Las Terrazas, places like that, they fall in love with those areas, right? I mean, it just makes sense because that, that's where you feel the emotion of a place. That's where you end up buying. So we look at that. Where do people stay? Where do they make their memories? And are people buying in those areas where they're making those memories? Here's a uh, gratuitous uh, photo slide that I created of people having a good time on the island. I know, I know it's not fair, especially to all you guys up in Toronto and Calgary and Edmonton and Michigan, Wisconsin, New York. Um, but this is the reality of life in Belize. So it's, uh, it's fishing, it's snorkeling, diving, fishing, just uh, – sailing great barbecue chicken for those of you who have been down and, and eat, ate in the tito's barbecue uh right there at the roundabout it's just it's fantastic all right so that's the reality that's what people fall in love with and then they start to look for areas to purchase so where are people going where are they having a good time well if you've spent any time on Ambergris Key in the past uh, year or so, then you've probably been to Secret Beach or at least heard of Secret Beach. Or if you're planning a trip down in the next month or two, you probably have plans to go and spend some time at Secret Beach. So I'm going to answer the, ask the question, uh, answer the question, what is so big about Secret Beach? What's the big deal? But first, I'm going to grab a sip of water. <laughs> so I've been talking here nonstop and I'm getting pretty excited. But before I explain secret beach let me launch uh, launch 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 one more poll to ask if you've been to ambergris key before because this will this will tell me how much into detail i need to go into regarding describing some of these different areas so please just answer the question have you been here before um are you planning a trip down uh and things like that so i just put it on the screen just go ahead and vote if you would And for those of you on Facebook Live, if you can just um, go ahead and answer for me. So we have a no, we have a yep. All right, Kevin, great to see you on there, buddy. Sorry I missed you last time we were down. It would have been nice to catch up for a beer. Next time for sure. Hope you and your wife are doing well. All right, excellent. All right, so this is interesting. Uh, okay, I'm going to close the poll. I don't want to take up too much to time. I want to share the results just so you guys can see. So 80% of you have never been here before and you're looking for recommendations. So after the webinar, email me. I have a list of hotels, things to do, flight recommendations, depending on where you live. I can send that to you. 20% have been here. Excellent. And then 20% um, are serious about owning some type of property. So that's chat. Excellent. So hide those results. Let's go on to uh, Secret Beach and Amargus Key. When did this area become something special? That's a question I get all the time. Why is it so popular? What are the opportunities? Who are buying and investing there and why this matters to us? And how can you can take advantage of the growth? So first of all, when did this area become something special? Well, let me just explain something to you. And maybe I can go to my next slide here. There are, the island of Amber is key runs lengthwise. All right, so you have the reef, uh, the Caribbean Sea, uh, the, the Caribbean is here. Then you have the reef line. You have Ambergris Key, which is a long island. It's kind of like a pencil. It's 25 miles long. It's very narrow. And then what you have on the back side is Ambergris Bay. And on this slide, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at Ambergris Bay, which is the west side of Ambergris Key. Now, this entire stretch of island, all 25 miles of it, up until just a few years ago, was completely inaccessible except by boat access. Why was that? Well, because the eastern side of the island, the Caribbean side, that was the side where San Pedro Town was, and that was the side that started to be developed. So you had roads, you had electricity, things like that. You had the reef. So if you wanted to go snorkeling, diving, fishing, you wanted to be close to the reef, that's the part of the island that developed first. And what happened back in 2009 and 10 is that a developer developed a, a large subdivision called Grand Belizean Estates. 
And to do that, he created a network of road systems. And eventually, <clears throat> he built a road that connected San Pedro Town, and it dead-ended right here, which you can see in the slide, uh, right here at this dock. So you see the dock with the uh, with a little bit of a covering on it? That was the Grand Belizean Estates Dock. And that is where we started selling properties in 2009, 2010. We would take people by boat to that dock, walk in the two blocks to Grand Belize, and uh, we would sell lots. And that's, that's what we did back then. But at the time, there was nothing on the West Coast. So 25 miles long of beach, and there were four single-family homes. Someone in from Canada, one of our clients, bought a property in this area. And you can see it there. You, you can't really tell, but there's actually a home there behind that second dock. And that was their first home ever in this area. And that home sat there by itself uh, with no one around for several years. I mean, there was nothing there. Finally, people started driving to this area and checking it out. Mainly it was locals. They come out on Saturday and Sunday, have a beach barbecue, bring a couple coolers of beer out there, let the kids swim in the water. And why they did that is because the eastern side of the island, the Caribbean side, which you think would have good swimming waters, uh, doesn't. It has a lot of seagrass, a lot of sargassum grass, a lot of trash that washes up from the Caribbean and it collects on those shores. And so a lot of the resorts have to go out there every morning and rake it, get that beach clean. And then even then, uh, many people do not swim on the waters right at the beach. A lot of large resorts have, have nice pools. Uh, if you take a kayak out to the reef, it's great swimming out there, but you can't swim right from the shore. So what we saw was locals coming out, swimming with the kids, having a good time. Well, pretty soon, tourists discovered this part of the beach, but at the time, it was secret. Nobody knew about it, so it was called Secret Beach. Now, over the past 18 months, we have seen a boom in this area. So now everybody talks about, oh, Secret Beach this, Secret Beach that. If you go on uh, TripAdvisor, it's got like uh, 750 reviews. You got those that love it, those that hate it. Well, you know, you got you always got those. But here are some recent uh, drone footage that I shot back in July of Secret Beach. We have several restaurants and bars. We have Pirates, not so Secret Beach Bar. We have uh, Secret Beach Bar. Bar and Grill. We have Marubas. Uh, just about uh, three weeks ago, another bar was opened up. We have the Blue Bio Bar and Restaurant. We have a uh, Paradise on the Key, uh, bed and breakfast up there now. We have one of my clients is building a nice single family beach from home. Another of my clients is getting his plans approved. Another one of my clients is building a, uh, a mini resort about a quarter mile north uh, of, uh, of, of this area. So finally, we are seeing this area take off and you know how we you know we've arrived because i own several properties in this area as well is before the distance that a property was from san pedro town was always mentioned in the listing description and that was important back in the day because let's say for example somebody uh was going to buy a house five miles north of town well they would say this is five miles north of san pedro town because San Pedro Town is where they would have to go for restaurants, cafes, beach bars, grocery shopping, get your staples, get your chicken, get everything like that. So it was important at the time. San Pedro Town was very important because it was the only town. And so somebody didn't want to be too far from things like being able to get some milk, get some bread and cheese, whatnot. Well, what started happening now is as the north side opened up, we saw grocery stores going in, hardware stores going in, lots of restaurants, lots of places to eat, lots of cafes, beach bars, everything like that. So now San, T San Pedro Town is becoming less and less significant. In fact, in some ways, it's actually less desirable because uh, people say it's crowded with golf carts and there's too many golf carts, the traffic this and traffic that. To be honest, I, was, uh, I spent uh, eight days in Belize just a few days ago, had a golf cart myself. And you know what? Uh, you know, you listen to these people complain about golf cart traffic. I was never stopped for longer than 10 seconds going through San Pedro town. And I went through it at least 10 times a day. So you know what? Traffic is maybe one thing to an Islander, another thing to those of us uh, who grew up in the States and Canada during rush hour on some of those highways. Anyway, back to my story. What we're seeing now is properties being described as distance from Secret Beach.
because Secret Beach is now becoming a town. It's a mini town, obviously, but it's becoming a hub of activity. Now you have cafes, restaurants, beach bars, and here's something significant. And what many of my clients don't realize is that uh, the gas station owners, the hardware store owners, churches, schools have all purchased property in this area. So eventually, there's going to be grocery stores, hardware stores, more of the uh, services and amenities like that beyond or just the, uh, the the cafes and restaurants. So <clears throat> that brings us up to this slide here. This is what Secret Beach looks like today. I took these pictures personally. I have a lot of video. I love taking my drone out to this part of the country. This is on a typical Saturday afternoon. Lots of people swimming in the waters. And to go back to the question real quick before I show you the, the, the picture, <clears throat> why is it so popular? Again, because it's the only place on the island that you can swim from the, from the shores. You can't find swimmable waters anywhere on the east side. I mean, yeah, you can go to Ramon's Village, and they have a nice little beach. But anyway, if you want to just walk from the shore into the water and spend the entire day in the water, uh, you have to go to Secret Beach. And that's all there is to it. So it's easy to get to by golf cart. Uh, here's the pictures. Just a beautiful place to be. And because of that, um, we're seeing some opportunities come up. So let's talk about some of the opportunities. Who's buying and investing there? First of all, who's buying and investing? My clients uh, typically are Americans, Canadians. They are ranging in age from 35 to, I would say, 58. And they are buying vacant land now to build on now, either to have a vacation home or to secure their retirement in the next 5, 10, 15 years. So that's that's the client base that I have. Now, what they're looking at doing is also having some type of business, some type of commercial opportunity that they can make some money with, whether it be a beach bar, cafe, providing some sort of barbecue. As some, some are very entrepreneurial. They're already starting to rent out things like kayaks and you know, those paddle bikes and, and things like that, uh, offering tours. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio Island, Island is out there in the distance. So there's going to be a lot of opportunities for people to do things in and around Secret Beach. I have a, a client right now who is building a family beachfront home. Like I said, another one who's opening up a small uh, boutique hotel, and that uh, the pilings went in. Just saw construction photos on that yesterday. That's that's pretty darn exciting. So I'm getting the question: What do you have for sale? What are the opportunities, and why are the opportunities? Because just because something's for sale doesn't mean it's an opportunity. It's just something for sale. Well, in my opinion, I look for real estate deals that have a lot of value. And where I personally can add value or where value is going to be added by others that are going to affect my property values. For instance, if you buy a piece of beachfront property on the east side where everything is already built up around it, you're going to pay about $350,000 starting price. Maybe up to four, five, six, seven hundred thousand dollars $700,000 because everything is already built. All right. And there's nothing left that can add value to that area. So you're gonna pay top dollar for that. And maybe there's a certain comfort level in that. Maybe it's like, you know what? I wanna know who my neighbors are. I wanna know where the street is. I wanna know all this. I feel comfortable. So I'm willing to spend a half million dollars on my property and another million dollars on the home to get a beachfront property. And that's fine. I have those type of clients, God bless them. They, they pay quite, quite well. However, what I look for as a real estate investor is an area where the price is lower because not everything is is built out yet. There there are some unknowns. It's not really speculative because there the property as it sits still has value, but there's going to be added reason for that property to go up in value. There's going to be added reasons to make that property more desirable, either by what I do to it or by what others do to it around. So here's an example: beachfront parcel number eight four four eight. This parcel is uh, 1.02 miles north of Secret Beach. It's got free and clear title, full ownership, facing Blackador Key and Cairo Sario. It is in this uh, north Secret Beach area in the path of progress. I'll explain what that is in a little bit. And financing is available. The price, $145,000. A complete steal, a complete deal when you look at all beachfront property in the island. So I don't want you to do this now, but if you don't believe me, Go to the websites, Google Amherst Key Real Estate, Google Belize Real Estate, look for beachfront properties 
anywhere on Ambergris Key, you come back and you tell me if you found a sandy beachfront property like this for less than 145. I guarantee you, you won't. If you do, I'll buy it myself if it's in a good area because I don't buy junk. I don't buy properties that have no reason to increase in value. 145 US and financing is available through the seller. Here are some pictures that I took uh, just a few weeks ago. I took some drone pictures. We had some new signs installed on it. You can see it's got beautiful sandy beach uh, overlooking the, uh, the beautiful waters of Amargus Bay. Absolutely perfect for somebody to build their vacation home or retirement home on um, or, uh, or just land bank it. Just, just sit on that puppy. I mean, to buy it, forget about it, wait 5, 10, 15 years, and, uh, and you'll do very, very well. Another lot I have is lot number 487. This is located just about, uh, I think it's 0.42 miles north of Secret Beach. This also has free and clear title. It's in an area where other resorts and homes are being built. Uh, financing is available on this lot too, and it's priced at $215,000. All right, so you might say, well, why the difference? Well, it's closer to Secret Beach for one. It already has road access. So the other lot, let's go back up just one slide. This lot yet does not uh, have road access. So boat access only. You're going to pay less because there's a little bit of an unknown and uh, you, you have to get there by boat. All right. Well, a lot of people get to their properties by boat in, in on Embrigus Key. It's not a big deal. But if you don't want to get to your property by boat, uh, then you're going to pay more than 145. So, for example, if that's important to you to have road access, then you go with the lot number 487, which is priced at 215,000. This lot is a beautiful lot, nice beach in a great area, has road access. So there's value in that, and that is my point of buying in the path of progress. Now, how much do you think this property was when there was no road access? It was a lot less. All right. Once road got there property values bumped up. All right. So once roads get to other, these other areas, we're going to see the same thing. Something has to add value to make properties go up. Love this lot. Here's some actual pictures that I took of it. Beautiful area. Again, when you're looking out at the Amargus Bay, you see a Kairosari out there. You see Blackadar Key, which is Leonardo DiCaprio's island. It's just uh, just a fantastic place. I'm sorry for those of you on Facebook Live. You can't see the slides. Again, I'm recording this. I will upload this to my YouTube channel, and then I will um, uh, post it, and uh, I'll send you the links. So just uh, just uh, email me that uh, email me your address, and I will respond by sending you the link. All right. So beachfront properties, one forty five and two fifteen. All right. What you could do if you're not looking to spend that much, or maybe you don't have that much to invest, is you can look at a property that is just a few rows back from the beach. And knowing that you get full access to all beaches in Belize, there are no private beaches in Belize. So here's important for you to know. If you just go maybe three or four rows back and build up, well, now you still have a beautiful view of Amherst Bay. You still have the full use and enjoyment of all the beaches. Take your kayak down there. Take your beach chair down there. Use any beach you want. But you pay a lot less, right? So here's an example. Lot number 8366. It's priced at 60000 U.S., free and clear title, no HOA fees in the subdivision, very low property taxes. Property taxes on this lot are $100 U.S. Dollars a year. And if you put a house on it, then your property taxes are about $250 a year. So excellent, excellent value. I don't have any direct picks of this lot because it is one row back from having current road access. So when you go to build, your builder will simply come in with a bulldozer. He'll bust in the road, put down some crushed limestone to create a road, access road to your property. Uh, I don't know if I have any uh, slides showing how the roads are built uh, in this area. I don't. Email me. I'll show you how that's done. But all of these businesses that I'm showing here on this slide are within about 100 meters of this property. So you have the, uh, the, the the bed and breakfast there in your upper right-hand side. You have the Blue Bio Bar, which is the overwater bar and restaurant. You have, uh, what is that? That's uh, uh, okay, Pirates. You have Marubas. And then the lower right-hand slide, you can see that this lot is, ooh, what is it? It's 350 feet from the water. 
350 feet from the water's edge. All right, this is an old Google Earth shot, so it doesn't really show the development. But the lot line is 350 feet from the water, and it's 60,000 bucks. So I think it's a pretty good deal. So when you work with some of these properties, you don't just get a piece of vacant land. We also give you the things that you need to succeed. For example, you might take title in your personal name, or you might take title in an IBC, which is just an international business company. It's, it's a lot like an LLC in the States. We uh, get on the phone together before you take title and we kind of talk about your family situation, what you're planning on doing with the property, and then make a recommendation on how to hold title. Again, the titles are free and clear, so it's full ownership. You can actually have your name on your title. I do on my personal properties, Dennis K. the second, right on there. Or I'll hold them in one of my uh, Anguillan IBCs. I have an Anguilla IBC I hold property in, and also I choose to hold some in a, uh, in a Belizean Chapter 250 Corp, depending on what I'm going to do with them. So we consult with you on that, make sure you're making the right choice. We also uh, can offer you some tips and tricks on how to monetize the property. For example, you can buy a property now and lease it out. That's what uh, Ed and Dawn from Michigan did on their property, the property where Secret Beach Paradise Bar and Grill is. Uh, that's owned by a very nice couple of uh, a couple clients of mine out of uh, Michigan. Uh, they own that. They did a nice job on that. But they leased out the property, and you could do the same if you choose in the right area. So you can do that, or we can give you some ideas of what kind of businesses might work well on that property, or just give you some tips and trips on uh, starting your own business, even if it doesn't have anything to do with this particular property. So how to set up maybe a, a consulting business in Belize or uh, – you know, set up a walk you through how to open up a beach bar, how to get your permits to do that, how to get your uh, alcohol license from the from the town board, different things like that. But anyway, we get on the phone and we talk about those different things so we can see if you wanted to work in Belize, uh, we can we can help you to do that. I can also introduce you personally to a couple really good architects that can give you ideas on what to build when the time comes. So I work with several. I like uh, El, uh, Froyland Alvarado. He's one of my uh, top architects I work with. He's designed homes for several of my clients. We can put you in touch with him. And also some of the best island builders uh, that we've had the opportunity to work with. We can also give you a personal introduction and meeting with them. Uh, and here's why that's important. Let's say you email one of our local builders. You find their email address somehow. Uh, I'm interested in getting a quote and uh, what is the price to build a uh, 1,500 square foot home in this area? You will probably not get a response. And uh, that's not because uh, you did anything wrong. It's just that the local island builders are busy. They have projects they're working on. And they get you know dozens of emails a week of people just looking for information. They don't have time to respond to all the questions about building. They're, they're not in the information business. You ask them, you're going to ask them, what, what about solar? What about wind? What about um, you know a reverse osmosis system? You know, what about different materials? I have all these ideas. Do you do container homes? And they don't have time to respond, you know, 12 hours a day to emails. But if someone like myself approaches them and say, look, I have this really good client. They own this lot in Secret Beach. They're looking to build this type of home. This is their budget. Make that warm introduction. Now you're going to be taken a lot more seriously. So I can do that for you if you work with me on any of these properties and actually anything uh, that you purchase on the island. One second, please. Um, all right. Just going back real quick <coughs> to this slide. Uh, I don't know why I put this in there twice. Um, probably just to uh, put a little bit of urgency into the presentation. Um, I think it's funny. This week I had three people actually email me and say uh, that they uh, they should have bought seven years ago, five or seven years ago. I mean, yeah, I agree there. Uh, me too. I should have bought more property five or seven years ago. But uh, just as a um, as a reminder, people are looking. People are buying. We sold two beachfront lots this week. We sold two off beach, oh, three off beach lots about uh, three weeks ago. So we're doing actually, you know, pretty good with sales. Here's the deals now that I'm just uh, that we just uh, highlighted. It says a quick recap: two beachfront properties, uh, two fifteen and one forty five, and then that prime residential building lot for sixty. So if you're interested in those, go ahead and email me dennisKII at gmail.com. If you're logging on now with my Facebook Live. Uh, just go ahead and send me a message through Facebook Messenger or something like that. So now, now we get to the favorite part of these webinars, these presentations, is 
your questions. I know a lot of you have questions. So if you do, go ahead and type them in the question box for those of you who are on the uh, on the webinar, on the GoToWebinar platform. And I've been seeing some information come in uh, on Facebook Live. Now, this is my first time on Facebook Live. These questions sort of uh, scroll pretty quick. I don't know how to, to get them back. Let me just, I don't want to end this thing. All right, all right. So what I'll do is we had some questions come in over the past six days as people register. I want to uh, address one important question first, and then we'll address the other questions that you've been asking that you've been posting. First of all, Kevin had this question, what makes a property a good investment? And I wanted to address that because uh, when I use the term investment, to me, it means the financial return, just the numbers. But it also means a lifestyle investment. So, for example, I had a, a, a an internet hater post on one of my Facebook posts just a few days ago. Uh, he said, if I remember his exact words, he said, um, I know you're a real estate agent, but please don't tell people that a single family home is a good investment. I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to have some fun with this. All right. So, yeah, you know, if, if you're an apartment building guy or, or a commercial guy, then, you know, that that's your preferred method of of investing. And, and some, of, some of the guys will tell you, you know, a single family home is not a good investment. Let me tell you what, in a place like Ambergris Key, if you have a nice single family home in a decent location. With the numbers we just looked at, with the tourism, the occupancy rates, the people coming to Amherst Key, how hard do you think it would be to rent out your home to a couple or a family and uh, really make it special and unique? All right. Would that be a good investment? So if you bought a lot by Sacred Beach, put a home on it, even if it's a simple home, do you think you could rent it based on the tourism numbers you're seeing? All right. Good. So if that rents for, let's say, uh, let's say we go at a low price, uh, an entire home for $250 a night. And you rent for 10 nights. How much is that? 2500 a month. Now, let's say you had expenses. You had, you had a caretaker who lived on site. So you paid him a bit. You, uh, you had some uh, property taxes, some minor repairs, some utilities. But how much profit do you think is in 2500 uh, check based on just someone who rented your home for 10 nights? All right? It doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that a house is a good investment. Now, here's the thing. People can say, you know, I can make a lot more money uh, doing something else. Well, that's true. We're not talking about a hundred different types of investments. We're talking about a home on the island, a home that you and your family can use at any time. And when you're not there, you get to rent it out. All right. So I think it's a, I think it's a good investment. Now, going back to Kevin's question, what makes a property a good investment financially is buying an area that is undervalued compared to other areas. Now, here's the thing. If you could still buy beachfront on the east side, let's say for $215,000 or $145,000, then you might say, you know what? Now, now I don't really see the value in the west side. Yeah, I like the east side, like the sunrise. West side's nice too, like the sunset, the clear water. I, I see where people could like both. But the fact is, they're not the same price. East side beachfront is you know, $350,000, 800000 a million dollars per lot. West Side has built-in value just based on, the, on what the market is right now. So that is going to go up. So to me, as a real estate investor, buying properties in those areas that are a little remote but are in that path of progress, to me, that's a good financial investment. And for, for me and my loved ones, it gives me the opportunity because I'm not a multi-multi-billionaire. I'm not a Richard Branson, but you know, I've done I've done pretty well for myself. But still, I'm looking to spend as little as money as possible to get the maximum return and enjoyment and to make a good decision. And I think most of you guys are, are as well. What also makes a good uh, investment is considering is an area currently desirable? If so, that's good. Or is it going to be more desirable in the near or distant future? And what I mean by that is let, let's say you have a part of the island, a part of Belize that is simply, it's not desirable now. And there's a lot of places on the mainland where you can buy cheap property, but you know what? Why would you want to be there anyway? So what if it's cheap? So what if you can get it for, you know, uh, 25,000 an acre or whatever? If you don't like being in those areas, it's not desirable. So first of all, make sure it has some intrinsic value. Make sure that the, the lot itself is in a desirable area. Now consider what is going to happen to make it uh, more desirable? What's going to add value? What's happening around it? 
And here's a couple examples that I had. <clears throat> First of all, Secret Beach, obviously. Those who bought, let's say when there was nothing there, no roads, no nothing, those lots had a certain value, all right? On the island of Amherst Key, obviously valuable. Near the beach, valuable. Near the great swimming waters, these waters haven't changed uh, in, in you know, a thousand years. They're the same waters. It had value. But someone came along and, and built a road. Value went up. Someone came along and built a home, opened up a beach bar. Value went up. Someone come along and put up a, a, a bed and breakfast. Somebody put some some um, uh, umbrellas in the water and so Bella Kim beers out of the back of their uh, motorcycle. Added value. More and more things are adding value to the area. So you consider if I'm going to buy somewhere, what is going to happen 12 months, 5 years, 10 years from now to add value or desirability to that area? Let me give you another example. The uh, the new Margaritaville Resort property, and I just got off the phone uh, with them yesterday. It's been about a half hour talking about the project. Very, very exciting. I'm uh, privileged to be a part of the team that's going to try to uh, market some of these condos for them and some of the properties around there. Now, <clears throat> this is a part of the island. This is a portion of the Margaritaville property that is being taken over and being reopened. Now, this property could have been just taken over by a group of investors and they could have called it anything, right? Give it some random name, call it, you know, um, you know, Ambergris Key Resort and Condos, all right? Now that would have been nice, right? And that would have, uh, the owners would have appreciated that and you could still go up there and enjoy all the natural beauty of this area, but bringing in a name and a company like Margaritaville that adds value to the area. Why? Well, because people expect certain things out of a Margaritaville. When they go there, they want to have fun. They want to sing Jimmy Buffett. They want to, you know, uh, drink margaritas, obviously. So value now is being added to this area. And in the past seven days, what do you think has happened to the property values around this area? For example, in the Basel Jones area, in the Robus Point area, in the Habaneros, in the Punta Azul. We've already seen in seven days, people, clients call us and say, up the price of my property. I know it hasn't sold yet. I don't care. Up the price because Margaritaville is going in. It has added value to the area. So I just wanted to address that because several, several of you were asking about that. So let's go back up to a, uh, a pretty slide to look at and just uh, take your questions. <clears throat> Let me grab a water, please. <clears throat> Thanks, guys, for tuning in. Really appreciate it. So I have a question here from Troy. Thanks a lot, Troy. Appreciate this. His question is, what is the range of cost for a container house off-grid? All right, that's a good question. I don't have a direct answer for you, but I do have some average cost of homes uh, that are off-grid. Uh, for example, uh, Armando Granyel, one of the island's top builders, he built a house in the Grand Belizean Estates subdivision. It's about a thousand square feet. It's an elevated house built all of beautiful Belizean hardwoods. It has uh, solar for power. Oops, hang on a second here. Solar for power. It's got a rainwater cistern, a built-in septic system, completely lot, the lot is filled, ready to go, turnkey, off-grid, and that house was about 115,000 US. Now, I have seen homes go for cheaper. For example, Will Mitchell is, has just built a, a Mennonite-style house uh, in the, uh, in the what, what do they call it, Palmyra Woods subdivision. And uh, I have pictures and video of that. So that's a house that's built on the mainland, shipped out to the island, and installed on the property. You can get a home like that, small two-bedroom home, for about uh, 80000 U.S., so you just buy your lot, you have that home built. I don't have enough experience with container homes, but what you might do, Troy, is uh, talk to the truck stop. Uh, the, the truck stop is a series of four or five containers that each uh, have a different type of food, like pizza, barbecue, it's on, the, it's on the road going north. Very, very popular. Just Google truck stop Ambergris Key. They have all those containers and uh, we can go from there. But um, we know you can do container homes, all right? The Builders Island don't have a lot of experience doing those, but they can certainly do them. It's just uh, a matter of working out a deal. So uh, sorry I can't give you an exact cost, but at least to give you some rough information. Again, I'm getting some, uh, some uh, oh, Kevin says easy. All right, 
Oh, there you go, Trey. Uh, Kevin on my uh, live Facebook feed just said it's very easy to do a container home. Thanks, Kevin. If you have any experience on that, go ahead and email the information. I'll, I'll send it on to Troy. All right. Good, good, good. So other questions I saw. Uh, Joe asked a question, how much to build a house? So there gives you some ideas. Now, if you want to go a little higher end, uh, for example, go with something more modern. I don't have any pictures here on these slides, but um, what I'm being told now is that if the home is off grid, for example, on that West Coast, at one of those beachfront lots that I uh, that I posted, uh, one of those off beach lots, you want to go with like a concrete structure, uh, two or three stories, and yeah, that's going to run you about 150 to 160 US per square foot. Now, what I would recommend is that if you're looking at building something higher end, go with a smaller interior size footprint. So I had a, a client email me yesterday. He said he's looking for a, a 2,500 to 3,000 square foot home. He's probably in the U.S., probably likes a lot of interior space, and that's cool. He can do that. It's not a problem. But what we find what works better on Ambergris Key is to have that Go with a small interior footprint. For example, build a three-bedroom home, but make it you know 1,500 square feet with a living room, kitchen, bedrooms, two baths, whatnot. But then outside, on the rooftop, have yourself a 2,000 square foot outdoor living room with an outdoor kitchen. And that can be under shade. You can thatch that or put up some fabric or create some shaded areas. But that exterior space costs almost nothing to build. I mean, it's, it's dirt cheap. And that's where you're going to spend most of your time anyway. So go with large verandas, rooftop decks, things like that. Keep the interior small. First of all, it's a lot easier to cool. If you like AC, uh, just to sleep better at night because you don't like it uh, so hot. And you don't like the tropical weather at nighttime when you're trying to sleep. It's much easier to cool, much easier to maintain, and it's a lot cheaper to build. So there you go. Take that. <laughs> all right. Let me just try to scroll through and see some of your other questions. Oh, yeah. I can scroll. All right. So here's a, a question from Adrian. Adrian, how long is the typical building process? Okay, so some of this depends on what you're building, obviously. Uh, if you do a Mennonite style home, you simply have to order the house to the mainland. In the meantime, your builder comes, installs some of the uh, utility services, puts down the pilings, your home comes, you set it up. That can be done in probably two or three months. If you're going for a, a larger project, uh, a concrete build, allow yourself six to nine months uh, to get that done. And what we have seen in our experience is that if it's taking longer than that, most of the time, it's the it's not the builder's fault. It's the uh, it's the owner you know, because uh, they come down. So they, they kick off the project, they come down, they like it, but then Two months later, they come down and say, oh, you know what? Uh, I, I want to change this. I want to change that. Can you modify the plan? Can you, you know, we need to, and at that time, all work stops. You get the, all the architectural plans. You make the changes. By the time the builder gets back to building, you know, it, it's it's two months later, causes a two months delay. Not his fault. He had all of his workers there ready to go. You're the one who made the changes, which is completely fine. But uh, I'm just saying, if you hear those types of stories on the internet, just know that usually our good qualified builders, six months, maybe going to nine to build a very nice quality concrete home. <clears throat> Pete, I would definitely send you the slides. Pete, you can uh, email me, send me a message, and I'll make sure you get all the recording. All right, good, good. So let's see. We have a couple other questions here. Uh uh, I have a question here regarding medical care. All right. So uh, interesting about medical care. I, I was going to put the slide in here, but I just saw today. Um, well, first of all, regarding medical care, Belize City, which is about a 15 minute flight away from Ambergris Key, handles all of our major medical needs. So if you need surgery, uh, if you need anything major done, you go to two private hospitals in Belize City. One is Belize Medical Associates. One, The other one is um, Belize Healthcare Partners. I just saw today on the Facebook feed for Belize Medical Associates, they are uh, posting job openings for a some sort of clinic or hospital on Ambergris Key. So I know that Grand Kareem is building a larger clinic, and I'm not sure if that's going to be tied in to Blaze Medical Associates, but that's actually really, really good for the island. It's going to be a big boom because sometimes people say, well, you know, I had this problem, or I'm not sure I'm getting older, or, um, you know, what are the facilities like on Ambergris Key Fourth Health Care? First of all, we have excellent doctors. No problem with that. 
Uh, if you have anything that goes seriously wrong, uh, most of the time they can patch you up, save your life, at least get you to the hospitals in Belize City where you can, they can take better care of you. But it'll be nice now to have some further uh, developments in the medical field right on the island. So that's, that's excellent. Have a question here. Uh, just came in from, from Clay. Thanks a lot, Clay. He said, is granite available uh, for counter finishes? Yeah, absolutely it is. In fact, I think we get our granite from, from Guatemala. Now, I don't know if Guatemala produces granite, kind of ignorant and stuff like that. But uh, on the last couple of projects I've been involved in, I think they had it shipped in from Guatemala. And uh, I can find out more information. But to check out Benny's Hardware. Benny's Hardware is the main uh, supplier of building materials in Belize City. Uh, but I know I've seen lots of granite around. Uh, Holchan Reef Resort used a lot of it. A lot of the major resorts use granite, so it is available in the country. But good question. Um, good question. All right. So let's go with... Have a lot of people saying they're coming down. Appreciate that. Um, all right. Good down there. Good on there. Let's check our time. All right, guys. Well, I've been going for an hour. I got another meeting coming up here shortly. So what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll end here for now. But if you have other questions, go ahead and email me. Um, it's been great having you all on today. This is a, this is a lot of fun, and I've enjoyed this tremendously. If you have any questions regarding lots, land, uh, islands, investment properties, single-family homes, uh, condos, whatever it is, go ahead and give me an opportunity to work with you guys. Uh, I really uh, appreciate your business. I value our, our relationship, and uh, I have a lot of fun at my job. It's great exposing people to the beauty of Belize and helping them to live their dreams. So y'all take care, and hope to see you in paradise soon. Cheers.